What's up, y'all? Alvin here. And today I'm going to tell you everything I know about leaders. Okay, initially I was going to title the video, Everything You Need to Know About Leaders. And I realized, you know, I don't know everything there is to know about leaders. So I'm just going to tell you everything I know about leaders. <laughs> okay, make sure you watch till the end because I'm going to give you a little bonus tip on dealing with pre-tied leaders straight out the package. So what is a leader? Now, and I'm not talking about a president, a dictator, uh, you know, any prime minister, any of that kind of stuff. I'm talking about the piece of monofilament that you attach to the end of your fly line that you attach your fly to on the other end. That is a leader. The piece of monofilament may be a single piece of monofilament, may be multiple pieces of monofilament, may be a thick piece, maybe a thin piece. We're going to get into all that. Okay, so what does a leader do? Does quite a few things, actually. Most people just think of it as a way to attach the fly to the end of your fly line. So the fly line's pretty thick. You can't really get the fly line through the eye of a hook and you need a leader to taper it down. So that leader does that. The leader also provides some stealth. Obviously, the big thick fly line splashing down is much more likely to spook the fish than the thin monofilament. There's a couple of things that that monofilament can do or not do depending on what type of fishing you're doing. So if you're doing something where you need a stealthy approach, you know, trout fishing, fishing spooky fish on the flats, you need a fly to land nice and soft. Well, a leader's going to help you do that. So what's happening as your fly line is rolling out, there's a little pocket of energy that's stored in the fly line. Physics. We could go into that, but I think that's a topic for another video. But basically what's happening is that fly line is speeding up as it's moving away from you. And if you didn't have a leader on the end or if you had a short, stout leader on the end, the fly line tends to kick and slap your fly down into the water. So think about it this way. The loop is like a baseball moving along at a certain velocity, actually speeding up, which is one of the crazy physics things about how the fly cast works. And then all of a sudden that baseball just smashes into the water. <laughs> so that's what happens when you don't have a leader or if you have a short stout leader. But imagine the baseball suddenly turned into a ping pong ball, which is what happens when that loop in the fly line hits that thinner diameter monofilament. So the longer and the thinner that leader is, the more of that energy gets spilled off as that loop hits the leader. So the more likely your fly is to land nice and gently. Now, the flip side of that is if you've got a big bulky fly, that is kind of pushing the limits of what your fly line can deliver. If you put a shorter and heavier leader on, it's gonna transfer more of that energy and be more likely to turn that fly over. You know, it's gonna land with a splash, but it's a big bulky fly. It's gonna land with a splash no matter what you do, but you just wanna get that fly to turn over. So that's sort of the basic physics of the long thin leader versus the short heavy leader. So short heavy leader, turn over bigger flies, transfer more energy, more likely to make a splash. Long light leaders are gonna spill more energy. The fly is gonna land much more gently and with much more stealth. So that's two of the things, kind of opposing things that your leader can do for you. Okay, so types of leaders. Uh, I just kind of lump them in two broad categories. One is a pre-tapered leader that you buy that comes in a package, you know, something like this. And then the other is a hand-tied leader. So you've got multiple different diameters of material, leader material, that you tie together to make your own tapered leaders. They both have their pros and cons. Obviously, the pre-tapered leader is the easiest. You just take it out of the package, attach it to your fly line, put your fly on the other end, and boom, you're fishing. Um, most of your pre-tapered leaders are gonna have a loop. Most of your modern fly lines are gonna have a loop. So loop to loop connection, put the fly on, couldn't be any easier, right? Okay, so there are some disadvantages though to the pre-tapered leader. So you need a really specific leader for a specific type of fishing. You may not be able to find a pre-tapered one. 
uh, the pre-tapered leaders are going to be more expensive. If you buy spools of tipping material, tie your own leaders, you can definitely save some money. And yeah, there's, you know, a lot more options if you're tying your own. You can make the tapers however you want. You can put whatever type of tip it on, what type of butt section you want. You can make whatever you want. Now, <laughs> the hand tied leaders have some cons as well. You know, one is the fact you got to spend the time, learn the knots, put them together. And, you know, they're never going to be quite as smooth as a pre-tapered leader. The other thing is there's knots. So knots may snag, knots may pick up weeds, you know, that type of stuff. So uh, there's pros and cons to both. I use both. I use pre-tapered leaders. I do hand-tied leaders. Just depends what I'm doing. Personal preference is probably the most important factor when deciding what to do with your leaders. Okay, so the parts of your leader, uh, I, I break them down into three basic parts. You got your butt section, you got your tapered section, and you got your tippet. And this will be on a hand-tied leader or pre-tapered leader. Usually the butt section, that's the thickest part. That's gonna be similar or you know close to the diameter of your fly line. That's gonna help transfer energy. Then the taper section is exactly that. It goes from that thicker butt section down to a smaller diameter. Um, there's all kinds of different formulas for tapers, both on pre-tied leaders and hand-tied leaders. Uh, and they have to do with how the energy is transferred. You know, you want a quick turnover, you want a slower turnover, a more stealthy turnover. Uh, it's almost as complicated as fly lines are. Not a lot of thought goes into it. Usually you grab one, you tie it on, it works or it doesn't work. If you do your own tied leaders, it's something to think about, you know, how quickly you go from that butt section to the tippet section. Now the tippet section is the end of the leader. It's sort of the uh, reusable part of the leader. So it's the part that is the minimum diameter for that leader. And it could be anywhere from, you know, one or two feet to six or eight feet, just depending on the application. I say the tippet is the reusable part. It's one diameter. So you buy your tippet material and then you can rebuild that leader after you've changed flies a few times. Or if you want to, you can modify that leader. So say you got a 3X leader and you want to throw some small flies, you can put 3X, 4X, or 5X tippet on that leader, still get a pretty good knot, still get a pretty good transition, and then that leader becomes much more versatile because you can change the tippet. You want to keep tippet material, you know, I would say maybe one or two sizes larger than the leader tippet and you know two sizes smaller than the leader tippet so that way you're going to be a lot more versatile when you're out there on the water and the leaders will last a lot longer that is another one of the cons of the pre-tapered leaders they're going to be more expensive so you want to have that tippet material so that you can rebuild those leaders while you're on the water and you're not going through a bunch of leaders every day Okay, let's talk a little bit about uh, specialty leaders. So like leaders for sinking lines, leaders that have shock tippets, leaders that have bike tippets. So for sinking lines, we typically use a much shorter leader. Um, having a longer leader sort of defeats the purpose of having a sinking line or a sinking tip line. The line wants to sink because it's weighted, but the leader doesn't have any weight. So if you have a long leader, it's going to tend to kind of float up toward the surface or belly up toward the surface. Now that could be um, a bonus. You may have a situation where you want to suspend your fly above the bottom you know, or above where that fly line is sinking, but typically you want to get your flies down. That's why you're using a sinking line so a short heavy leader is going to work better most of the time on sinking lines. I almost always tie my own leaders for sinking lines because not too many companies are selling you know three foot OX leaders <laughs> and that's basically what we use most of the time or even heavier so uh, I do like to taper them a butt section and a tippet uh, you probably could just go with a single piece of mono for your sinking tip leaders. Shock leaders, 
leaders with bite tippets. These are usually for bigger fish or toothy fish, you know, a bite tippet, think a piece of wire, you know, six inches, eight inches, maybe even a foot of wire at the end if you're fishing for some fish that has a lot of teeth, you know, barracuda, dorado, something like that. Uh, shock tippets are usually some really heavy mono to prevent breakage, you know, or, or just to prevent abrasion if a fish has a rough mouth or gill plates, um, think a tarpon leader or snook leader, same thing, instead of having wire because these fish don't have teeth, but you do want to avoid abrasion from rough gill plates, you'll put anywhere from, you know, 40, 60, 80, even 100 pound shock tippet on the end of your leader. So you'll still have the tippet, you know, the 10, 15, 20 pound tippet, but then on the end of the leader, you'll have that heavy mono to prevent abrasion. Okay, so this leader thing, I know we just kind of scratched the surface with this video. You can get really deep into it like a lot of other aspects of fly fishing. You can make it as simple or as complicated as you want. I kind of like to stay in that mid zone. You know, there are times when you do need to get some specific leaders, um, but a lot of times you'll be surprised at how far you can get with, you know, a couple of really basic leaders. Uh, I use the same leaders for redfish that I use for bass. So. There's no need to make this any harder than it absolutely has to be. <laughs> All right, as always, I wanna thank you for watching this video. If you haven't, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, it helps me out, makes me feel like I'm doing this stuff for a reason. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. And in the meantime, good luck on the water. All right, so here's my little tip for dealing with pre-tapered leaders right out the package. So you may already know this, but I do remember when I didn't know this and it was sort of a game changer. You got your pre-tapered leader and you take it out of the package. It's in this nice loop. And how do you get it unlooped? <laughs> well, it's a lot easier than you think. So. What you do is you grab the, the butt section and you just kind of push it through and you'll see that it's actually wrapped around the rest of the leader. So you can just push it, unwrap it until you get all the loops out and then you just Unwrap it like so. No tangles. <laughs> it's like magic. <laughs> now, if you want to uh, store a leader, same thing, just going backwards, wrap it around your fingers. Until you get uh, maybe six inches or so of the butt section and just take that and wrap it around the leader. So you're going to just do the opposite of the way you just unwrapped it. That'll keep it from tangling. Ta-da! <laughs> I hope that helps somebody. I do remember that being a big deal when I first started fishing and I learned how to not tangle my leaders as soon as I took them out of the package. <laughs>